All right, here we have Wesley, who's going to do a quick demonstration of uh, the Team on Alarm Master for us. So, uh, Wesley, thanks for joining me. No problem. Glad to be here. All right, so I can see already we've got a uh, login prompt, right? Yeah. So. All right, so go ahead and uh, get us logged in. All right. Now, there are two major modes here, right? Uh, that we're Correct. going to be going through? Yeah, okay. we got monitor and edit mode. We'll start off in monitor. Okay. And monitor is where we're actually viewing all the telemetry that has come into the system. So this is what a, just an operator would do on a daily or hourly basis right, checking right. everything? Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're looking at here is a lot of points that have just come into the system. So right here we have our standing alarms, and these are all alarms that are currently active in the system. So uh, also here we have COSs. So COSs are change of states. So basically these are, uh, is a historical view of all your points. So basically all of their transitions between alarm and clear. Whereas our standing alarms here shows us just what's currently in alarm. So give me the use case. Like when would you use each of those? So basically a standing alarm is for really quickly just getting to what are the current issues that are unresolved. Whereas COS, I get to see both um, what is currently standing as well as kind of a historical view of what has happened. Right. Okay. So the CS, COSs never go away. They're a record of maybe what happened in the middle of the night when you get in in the morning. Exactly. And then the standing is where are we right now? Exactly. Okay. All right, so I can see you got some various uh, severity in there color-coded. Yeah, right. we got a couple different severities here, like this high temperature here is a major, so we got a little bit of a different color code. Mm -hmm. And then everything that's in green is a clear, right? So, you know, green right. is all good. I can see the severity is whatever severity it was, but yes, I see the green on the clear for right. everywhere else. Okay. Yep. All right, and so we got a couple other options up here. One most notably I want to touch on is this set filter. Now, this one is something you're going to use a lot because it really lets you drill down uh, into what information you're looking for at any given time really quickly. So I'll just go ahead and throw one on here real quick. I'll activate this. Let's say that uh, we've got a lot more telemetry in here. I just want to look at uh, my alarms that have to do with my batteries out there in the field. So I can just throw a real quick filter on, and I'll just say description. I want to look for all my alarms that include battery of any severity and any uh, state here. So since we're looking at COS, I'll look at alarms and clears. So there we go. Real quick, I can just jump to uh, all of the alarms that meet the criteria that I specified. In this case, alarms that have battery in the description. Okay. Now this is a uh, list-based view where you're kind of, it's like when emails come in almost, right? Mm -hmm. They start piling up. Right. But now I know there's some more graphical options in Timon, right? Can we take a look at that? Yeah, actually. Okay. So we have our GFX here. If I click down here, here I have kind of a hierarchy that shows me all of my nodes. And if I actually jump into one, we can check out this really awesome map here. And this is actually from one of our clients in New York. Um, so we have a top level here. If I click on some of these icons, I can go ahead and drill down to further layers. This one's actually built out really nicely. We go all the way down to an equipment level here. And then from there, we can jump to another tabular view that has a subset, you know, of what that first view would be. So again, helping us get to kind of a, a more scaled down uh, version of our overall view to kind of get to what we're looking at quicker. Right. I can see you went from a, like a big map down to a, small, a smaller map to, right. and I think I've seen somewhere it's like a floor plan. Yeah. And uh, in this case, I guess there was a rack diagram. Yeah, this one we actually went, if I go ahead and close this out and go back and we'll go up a couple levels here. If I say level up, uh, we'll go back through. There we go. We actually have an equipment rack here. So this is pretty cool. Sure, yeah. And it, it also helps too if you got guys back in the knock and a guy out in the field. It can really help to get them in sync if they can be looking at the same thing when they're discussing um, events happening in the field. Sure. Yeah, I've seen people get pretty creative with this where it's just any image, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I've seen people build menus and just a lot of different things that uh, whatever makes sense for the kind of hierarchy they want to create. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, uh, is there anything else in monitor mode we should really look at? I know there's... Uh, there's like silencing and some other things that might... Yeah, we have some other options here along the top. Let's get rid of my filter here. We'll deactivate it so we can see a little bit more information. Here we have different acknowledgement options. Um, one most simply, if you double click on a COS, do this one here at the bottom, we can acknowledge it. And it'll, uh, it won't it will be deleted from history, but it will uh, be removed from our COS view here. Mm -hmm. So if this is something that's already occurred, I'm aware of it, especially an event like this, it's already cleared. I can just go ahead and acknowledge it out of the view so it's not cluttering up my view with more active uh, or recent uh, telemetry that's come in. 
and uh, have a few more options for that here. If, if I acknowledge this whole group, then all of these will go away. Or if I acknowledge the page, um, everything that is currently in this view here uh, would be acknowledged. So that way, if I've kind of had, you know, an alarm storm where a bunch of alarms that come in really quickly and I'm looking at them and I glance and, you know, I know that these things are uh, have either cleared or don't matter so much, I can acknowledge by page. So that way I can kind of go through a bunch of alarms really quickly without going through a whole bunch of things I haven't looked at yet. Right. Now, that's one of those things that you can lock out, right? So certain users, if they're more senior, might have this ability. Right, for sure. So everything here along the top is governed by a permission scheme that we have set up. So that way, people that you don't want to be uh, possibly, you know, removing data from a public view can do so. Right. And I guess ultimately, though, even if someone did something like that, the standing alarms list is your acid test for what's currently active. Exactly. Right? Okay. So at any time, you can just jump back and view everything that's currently active in your system. All right, so I think that pretty well covers some of the core of monitor mode, right? Right. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into edit, I guess. Sure. So I'll go ahead and click this edit link here at the top. We'll go ahead and jump into edit mode. This is actually where most of the configuration in the system occurs. So to start off, we'll go ahead and go into devices, because this is where we're actually cataloging all the devices in our system. So well, we, this manufacturer list has really grown since I last saw it. Yeah, yeah. We're constantly adding new stuff, and it's just governed by, you know, whatever our clients need. They approach us uh, with some piece of equipment that we maybe never have seen before. You know, they either work with us remotely or send us in the equipment. We'll pick it apart and create a module for it. Okay, so what are we adding now? So right now, uh, we've actually got a temp defender that we've already set up. So I'll go ahead and go in here and look at uh, look at it. If I go in here in discrete alarms, we see a couple of alarms have already been configured. Yeah, I remember seeing some of those over in monitor mode. Right, right. Yeah. So setting them up is actually pretty simple. All we have to do is we double click in a row like this. And so let's say that this one will be uh, my battery discharge. Simple as that. Click save. Now I've configured a new point. Simple as that. Okay. And then I can see all the other tabs for controls and Yeah, we've got other things like controls. If we scroll over a little bit farther, we've got analogs and analog alarms. Basically, this represents all the information that we can pull from this device. Okay. Now, this is, I guess, uh, for someone who gets a little bit familiar with these menus, it seems like you'd start cruising through this. I saw wizards on the, the front page. Those are for, like, basic initial setup. Though. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and jump back and look through those real quick. These can be really helpful when you're getting kind of getting your likes with the system and getting used to it. Uh, here we have a bunch of common tasks that people do, like setting up a device or user a notification. So if you just kind of click into these, uh, it gives you a little brief introduction to what you're going to be doing. And as you walk through, it gives you a real easy way to go ahead and set up devices. So you pick your device type. Mm -hmm. Let's say this time I'm going to be setting up a NetGuardian 832. So I select that from the menu. Go through. We'll give it a name. We'll say uh, Fresno Headquarters NetGuardian. And then all we have to do is su supply an IP address. So we'll say this one is 12610. Six, mm -hmm. a unit ID and port, all this stuff is already good. And then we can say next from here. And do you want to enable polling? All right, so that would already be done. Yep. And so once we do this, we'll say next. We get a summary of all the options we've selected. Cool, and then that would drop inside of the menu we looked at previously. Exactly. Oh, and uh, there's a link to it, the device list. Yep. And once we follow that link, it jumps us right back to our device list where we could see it, you know, with all of our other devices and do any additional configuration from there. Okay. All right. So what else we got in uh, edit? I guess there's a GFX, right, to set up the, the yeah. graphics. If we go over here, we can see where we actually would set up that map like before. So if I look at all my profiles here, I'll go ahead and select my New York network, the one that we were looking at before. And if I want to make changes, I click edit map. And this looks the same as it did in monitor, except now I can do things like add a node. So let's say uh, we'll add another one over here. If I right click on this, I get all my options for editing this node. For example, I could give it a name and then we'll just say... Queens North, perhaps. <laughs> How about where it is? There we go. Queens North. Okay, and now we have our Queens North node. 
And by default, every node is a map node, mm -hmm. and that enables us to navigate like we were doing before. So for example, if I double click on this one, this is a new node. Nothing below it has been defined yet, so we don't have a background image. Right. But to do something like that, all we have to do is add a background. And we have a, a bunch of images here that have already been uploaded, but you mm -hmm. can upload it in any image you want. Uh, we support like PNGs, SVGs, JPEGs, pretty much anything you got is going to go in here. Right. I guess anything your browser could show. I mean, sure. it's just a web image. Okay. So we'll just pick an image here just to, to throw something in there, <laughs> okay. say, okay. You can see a little bit of queens over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, but you could, I, I've seen, like I said, people do creative menus and yeah. uh, I guess I've seen some floor plans and yeah. uh, even kind of logical network diagrams. Yeah, and that's the great thing as as opposed to being locked into some kind of mapping software like versus images, you really can do whatever you want. Okay, cool. All right, uh, I, I definitely want to look at user permissions. I know I brought that up earlier looking sure. at uh, whether or not people can acknowledge an entire page at once. Right, so we'll go ahead and come down here we'll go to privileges and system users. And then, oh, look, it looks like you're Whoa. in here, Andrew. I had no idea. I feel so powerful. Let's see how much we trust Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, the marketing guy. Oh, no, very little based on very that Very little, apparently. Okay. No. So here we actually have a whole list of permissions. Um, and right here, well, starting at the top, this was actually built from a profile, and we can take a look at that. Um, but here we have a whole list of permissions. So basically... Do you want to give someone uh, the ability to uh, go into edit mode? Um, so here we have exit monitor mode. So right here, uh, this permission uh, is enabled. So basically, you can exit monitor mode. You can come into edit mode and start configuring things. Mm -hmm. You have uh, the ability to run reports. All right. Um, but for example, you don't have the ability to acknowledge an SNMP alarm. Someday, someday. Okay. Yeah, someday. I can get see up, up higher too. The is that the alarm act level a little ways up, uh, where you have none, single, and all alarms. Yeah, right there. Okay. So here it's. Uh, do you want to allow someone to acknowledge one alarm at a time, or like before, how I was talking about those acknowledgement buttons? Do you want to allow someone just to blast a whole window worth of uh, alarms at once, or are you going to make them acknowledge alarms one at a time? All right. Uh, anything else we should see here? I feel like we've gotten a pretty uh, good overview, Timon. Yeah, there's a pretty good overview. Um, a couple other things, like one is this root alarm filter, and this is actually pretty cool. Because what this allows you to do, if I go through and set one up here, we'll give it an ID. This is a really cool feature, and what this allows you to do is to uh, block other incoming alarms based off of one. So, for example, if you have a site where uh, you get an alarm for AC power loss, you know that power is gone at this site, so you would expect to be getting a lot of equipment offline alarms, for example. Mm -hmm. So, since you already know that there's no power at the site, you don't really need to have your view cluttered up with a bunch of equipment offline alarms. So what this allows you to do is up here in the top, you specify uh, what alarm is that trigger. So if I say an alarm here, and I'll give a port address display and point. So the address of our temp defender that we looked at before was 21. So we'll display one. Point three, I believe, was my battery alarm here. So if I save that. Oh yeah, there it is, low battery. Low battery. All right, and if I add a member, so for example, let's see here, same device, let's just say point 0.2. Mm -hmm. So basically what this is going to do is, uh, let's say, for example, that this smoke detector will throw some kind of alarm if it loses power. Uh, if I see this low battery voltage come in, I would expect that some equipment tied to that battery is also going to have some alarms coming in. But since I know that my uh, battery voltage is already low, I don't need to clutter up my view with all these extra alarms coming in because it's something I already expect. So this allows you to kind of uh, keep your setup real clean, and not have a bunch of uh, information coming in that you're already aware of. Right. So you would add multiple members to that root alarm. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think somebody uh, near us, a uh, phone company, was using this for different sectors. So yeah. if one, if they knew that one whole sector was down, I don't need to see the 20 underlying sites. <laughs> right, right. So just hide those. Okay. Exactly. All right. Uh, anything else you want to show us here about Timon? 
Um, one other thing that's pretty cool over here we can check out is NRI setup. And what this actually allows us to do is uh, it allows us to set up a uh, master-slave configuration with two T-mons. Mm -hmm. So uh, ideally, you'd have these um, geographically isolated. So if you have two T-mons here, uh, you put in the IP address of what's going to be your master and then the IP address of what's going to be your slave or your primary, secondary, whatever terminology you prefer. And basically the way this works is as long as the master is online, it'll be performing all of the polling and alarm collecting duties. But should it ever go down for whatever reason, you know, perhaps that your knock loses power or anything like that, uh, the secondary will detect that the master is down and within a second or two, it will take over as the uh, master station will... Uh, resume all of the polling and alarm uh, collecting um, duties until the uh, primary system comes back online. So that way you're never without monitoring. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't think, uh, I know one DPS client did this New York to San Francisco. Right. There's some that are spread out across. Yeah. So if you get a crazy <laughs> storm in New York or something or you right. power lost, it's just going to go switch to the backup. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Anything else that's on the tip of your tongue? I think that's a pretty good uh, tour. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good overview, and that uh, kind of shows you a lot of what Team One can do. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming by. No problem. <laughs>